Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for another retro RPG. And this week I would like to present this, Realm of Chaos, Slaves to Darkness. A 1988 source book for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, and Warhammer 40,000. They've covered everything to do with Chaos for the three games, because they're all kind of in a connected universe with the same Chaos Gods and all that, in one source book. Now this is suggested for mature readers. And we will see if that actually is based out when we're inside. Probably with Demonettes of Slanesh, I imagine. But we flip over to the back of the book. And we have Realm of Chaos, a world of arcane horror for all players of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Nearly 300 lavishly illustrated pages, army lists for mortal and immortal forces, dozens of chaos mutations, new chaos spells and weapons, Complete generation system for Chaos Champions and their retinues. Fully compatible with Citadel miniatures at Realm of Chaos range. Possession of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, Warhammer 40,000 or Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is necessary to use the contents of this book. And as I said, it's copyright 1988 by Games Workshop. And it's an interesting look. And it's quite a rare one from my understanding. Because I had a lot of difficulty getting this a few years ago. Perhaps there's new copies floating around out there. But... It's packed with stuff. As many source books were, some of them picked from um, White Dwarf magazine of the time, which was an absolutely wonderful resource for the games in the 1980s, early 1990s, before it just went on to covering Games Workshop only stuff and more onto just the war games. And we've got the classic team here of Brian Ansell, Mike Brunston, and Simon Forrest with additional material by Matt Cornell, Graham Davis, and Rick Priestley. Some of the best writers in British role-playing at the time. I won't say forever, but some of them are absolutely brilliant. I know that anything by Rick Priestley or Graham Davis, I definitely try and pick up because they are fantastic. So, opening up, we have... Inquisitor Thrax cleared his throat and dictated the last section of his report. So, we're picking up with Inquisitors, so we're in 40k territory. Dark and dangerous is the world, a place seething with conflict. And we go through what this book contains. And we've got abbreviations, so we can see what the skills mean, and what the different rules are, uh, games it's covering at each section. The spread of chaos. The powers of chaos and their demonic minions. The march of fortress. So a lovely piece of art. Um, does it say who it's by? It doesn't cl clearly state. But with a background for each piece of art. Lovely stuff. And we go straight on to the Chaos Pantheon. So we have Slanesh. The uh, Chaos God of Pursuit of Hedonistic Pleasures and Overthrow of All Codes of Decent Behaviour. So that's probably where they're suggested for mature players comes in we've got corn the blood god an angry murderous god of chaos he's the power of chaos in aspect to mindless and absolute violence and we're on to demons already because this book actually only covers those two gods there was a sequel book in 1990 i believe which covered the other gods which is slightly odd because in warhammer fantasy roleplay there's actually five chaos gods but the fifth one always gets forgotten about because he was the Chaos God of fighting Chaos Gods. Because that's the aspect of Chaos, really, that it will turn on itself. But they didn't like that. They decided to just stick with the four big Chaos Gods. And that's what these books are based on. Especially as they're the only ones that are mentioned in 40k and Fantasy Battle. So we've got the Demons, Demonic Abilities, Invulnerability to Normal Weapons, Magical Attacks, Instability... Psychology, spellcasting, demon names with random uh, rolls. Oh, do I have a d20 on me? So, I have dice lay here. Allow me to scramble for them. So, first die roll, 1d10. Second die roll, we have two eights. So, on column eight, number eight down, we have... Sharp, we have a 6 and a 13, 6 and 13, sharp, grew, 
and six and seven. Sharp Grewwind. Now there we've got a Chaos Demon's name. Sharp Grewwind. Very catchy. We've got Servants of Corn. So we detail through all the god uh, demons of battle. So we've got the Blood Thirsters, the Blood Letters, the Flesh Hounds, the Juggernauts, giant creatures of chaos, the Servants of Slanesh. We have the Keepers of Secrets, um, Minotaur like with big crab claws and extra arms, the Demonettes. Now, these actually seem the healthiest or most decent demonettes I've seen of uh, Slanesh demons, as they actually seem to be wearing clothes. But they are very much into the crab claws. We have the fiends. And we have the mounts of Slanesh. Weird uh, lizard-like beings with anteater tongues. We've got followers of chaos. The road to power. Followers of Chaos with the Path to Chaos. Chaos Warriors and Sorcerers. Now, I don't know if the owner of this book before me, because obviously I bought it secondhand, because I bought it a long time after, has stuck this in or whether it was stuck in publishing. But I can actually feel this How the System Works section is cut out and stuck on, which seems a little unusual. Um, starting profiles. So we've got Chaos Dwarfs, Humans, Dark Elves, and other races. Notice they're not Chaos Humans, they're just Humans. The Mark of the Gods. Again, another stuck-on section. Um, cut out. So I imagine White Dwarf at some point clarified the rules and corrected them. And the owner of this book was good enough to go and stick on the sections. Because here we are, there's another full page of Chaos Rewards. Although that looks photocopied because that's really quite dark. Rewards of Chaos. Rewards of the Gods. So Rewards of Corn. You can get the face of a blood letter. Um, the skin of corn. The collar of corn. Chaos Attribute, Demonic Name, Regeneration. So Chaos Warriors can get various uh, special abilities. You can get a Familiar, the Horns of Slanesh, the Fate of a Champion of Chaos, becoming Chaos Spawn eventually, becoming a Demon if you do well enough for the, your Chaos God. And it details all these, which are very useful for the battle games creating a more powerful opponent, but they are equally brilliant for WoW and Fancy Roleplay. Because you can really create a Chaos Champion to th uh, threaten the entire party. Becoming a Skeleton Champion. Casualties in campaigns, retinues, so building up their army. Which uh, is possibly more valid to the war games, but I can definitely see it being useful for creating, like, the castle of a uh, chaos champion which the players are going up against and you could roll on this to see what the castle is populated by as the players have to fight their way through you know d4 ogres in one room some minotaurs in another rewards and the champions you points values and followers of chaos so these are the points values so we're very much into battle territory here instant demon princes and chaos spawn Champions of Chaos and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, an entire pay page detailing how they can be used. And to the Magic of Chaos, and another of these full plates with an interesting looking environment and a story, or a few paragraphs of story explaining them. Now, Summoning Demons, Pentagrams, Dispelling Demons and Pentagrams, Demonic Saving Throws, all useful stuff for creating demons and that in Fantasy ro uh, Roleplay and using them in play. The Spells of the Chaos Gods. Chaos Weapons. We go through the sections very, very quickly. We only dwell on each for a couple of pages. Uh, chaos Weapons and Properties. So your Chaos Weapons can have interesting and different abilities. You know, they can have the mind of a creature. They can enfeeble the target. They can fade. So they can pass through armor, I imagine. They've got Lashing. They're made from living metal. They can absorb magic, can emit fiery blasts or flames. Uh, protection. Sleep. They can cast spells. They've got strength. They've got willpower. They can taint things with the mark of the warp. And I have to compliment all the artwork. Let's just dwell on those for a moment. The swords and weapons here look fantastic. And 
the plates of various chaos beings and champions look amazing. And demon weapons. So the weapons that actual demons will carry. Chaos magic items. We go through those. Now bloodstones, rods of command. The familiars that chaos wizards will have. The marks of chaos. Um, introduction. Seems an odd place for introduction. What are we introduced to? I am, I'm guessing it's the Mark of Chaos we're getting introduced to. Fear points. Personal attributes. Um, personal Chaos attributes descriptions. So whether we've got bestial aces or the weaponed arms, bird feet, to make all the mutations for Chaos creatures and um, NPCs. Fantastically gruesome transformation of half spider, half man in the reverse of the Dungeon Dragons Drider, where basically it's a centaur with a human body and spider legs. Instead, we've got the spider head. That is a far more horrific monster. Crown of flesh, fangs. They're a magician, they're granted magical powers. They've got a metal body. They're like a. Um, Creature of metal or mechanical parts, they can become mechanoid. Razor sharp claws. Just so many different abilities to mutate and change different chaos champions and make them interesting and different. Dominant chaos attributes. And again, we've got more and more, including silly walk. The majority of this unit have an odd walk, hopping, taking ridiculously short steps, bounding from side to side, taking several steps forward or back or whatever. So the Ministry of Silly Walks is possible. Colours of Chaos. So we've got painting guides. How to make your miniatures look not just like ordinary fancy creatures, but add weird colours in and make it obvious that these are mutated, horrible, chaotic beings. So every metal. That's a section out of White Dwarf that they've just transplanted in here. Um, lovely full colour plates of very nicely uh, painted miniatures. The champions and war bands, so some generated ones, again full colour plates, and we carry on through with more colour plates, banners. <clears throat> Turn on to the Hordes of Chaos section. So, being an art main, an extermination of the horrid demonic and mortal armies of chaos that do battle to further their ends, the Dark Masters, and being in a description of the numberless unnatural creatures that do accompany them in spreading mayhem. So far more useful to Fantasy Battle and 40k where we're talking about the Chaos Legions, much larger armies. Um, auxiliaries, Chaos Points, Chaos Armor, we're going over much of the same ground here with stats for the different things, but these are stats for Warhammer Fancy Roleplay. We've got Intelligence, we've got Cool, we've got um, Weapon Skill, we've got Ballistic Skill, Strength, Toughness, Wounds, in, um, Initiative, Agility. All the stats are there, so these are fully all usable for Fancy Roleplay. And it's a great way of getting a larger audience out of a single book. We're on to sort of Undead Contingents here. So we've got Mummies and Skeletons. Um, hiding ethereal creatures in undead units, so you can have ghosts and spirits. Armies of Chaos, with mercenaries and allies to them. Armies of Corn, and detailed breakdowns for each of those. Armies of Slanesh, again with a detailed breakdown, so Witch Elves, Cold One Riders. This is a great source book for extra stats. And we've got the Dark Millennium which goes into 40k chaos, so chaos and warp space, the fall of the Eldar, psychers and the warp, Illuminati, the Emperor and Sensi, demons in Warhammer 40k, and we detail all this, teleporter accidents, summon demons, <clears throat> possession, really cool artwork, compliments to the artists definitely. Got Chaos Renegades. They're basically the Chaos Space Marines, I believe they later became. Renegade Followers. <coughs> the Traitor Legion. So these are actually the Chaos Space Marines. And 
the artwork is just lovely. I cannot compliment it high enough or often enough. It's fantastic stuff. The Order Malaeus, so the Inquisition which deals with fighting demons. Dark Millennium Army Lists. We go into details of weapons and things they can carry. Chaos Armor, Bionics, Heavy Weapons, lots of stats for these. The World Eaters Army List for you using in uh, 40k. The Emperor's Children. We have Squads, Chaos Spawn, Beastman Slave Squads, Lieutenants for the Black Legion, Librarians. And just large forces you can use of Chaos Marines in battles. Um, the effect on the tactical squads make me think of Gene Stealers, but they didn't arrive in the game until after this. Because we're still at the stage when Beaky Marines are the standard. <clears throat> Librarians, Chaplains, additional forces, and they were through the book. So what else was out at this time? We've got Fancy Roleplay, we've got Rogue Trader, we've got the Warhammer campaign of Enemy Within, Shadows Over Bogenhafen in one book. We've got Chapter Approved, which I had somewhere. Um, Death on the Reich, Fancy Battle 3rd Edition, Warhammer City, Mighty Fortress, Power Behind the Throne, Warhammer Siege, Something Rotten in Kislev, and Warhammer Armies. All the Warhammer campaign there, fantastic stuff. I will cover that at some point. And some of these 40k things are really cool and I may cover them. And we've got an advert for the second book. So this was Slaves to Darkness. And the second book is The Lost and the Damned. Citadel Catalogue and White Dwarf Magazine. And that's us through Realm of Chaos Slaves to Darkness. Which is a great book for 40k. Um, I highly recommend getting a hold of it if you can find it and you like 40k, it's a very, very good book. Um, but that's all I've really got to say about it. As always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. But most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.